I'm going to let you go now and bring in my guest for this hour, criminal defense attorney and past president of the Georgia Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, Lauren Zimmerman. Also with us, criminal defense attorney and registered nurse, Marie Pereira. Thanks to you both for joining me this evening. We're all on pins and needles most of the day. The jury ended up going home. We'll be back on those pins and needles come tomorrow. Um, Lawrence, I'll start with you. Um, do you have any issues with Johnny not being there? Good chance that he won't be for this verdict. No, not really. And you know, the jury's deliberating is a civil matter. It's a little bit of a different issue. I don't, I don't really have, I don't have an issue with it, especially if he has other obligations. I, I guess it'd become a question in the jury's mind if they know he's not there. But I don't see a problem. They're really focused on the evidence, and he's been there for seven weeks. Yeah, and when they're when they're deliberating, they don't know what's going on as far as that goes. Marie, any thoughts on that? I agree with my co-panelists. This is not a criminal matter where he's manda mandated to be present in court. I think him being present in court could cause a whole hoopla la and if he doesn't win, it's gonna be a problem. So maybe it's best if he just stays in the UK and continues with his music. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it makes him feel good, so let him do what he has to do. But I still think, based on the way he spoke to this jury and how he testified about, this is about reputation, he got a chance to tell his truth, should be there but again when i say should i only mean you know just from from a appearances standpoint not for any other reason all right jury had a question today uh the question involved essentially maybe we can bring up the question that they had um essentially it involved the very first question on the special verdict form and that basically was the the they wanted to know if that um headline or one of the statements that they're considering which was the headline to the article meant that they consider just the statement or the entire article. Judge ultimately told him it was just the statement in and of itself. And basically it was, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Lawrence, uh, what do you make of that question? Um, do you think it allows us to read into the tea leaves at all? Well, you know, there's nothing harder than reading the tea leaves of a jury, but uh, certainly they're focused on looking at every angle and want to make sure whether they need to consider that as part of an element of defamation. And you know, maybe they saw the headline, they think that is part of it, and then they know the content. It's not great uh, for Ms. Hurd either. So, I mean, I can read the tea leaves that way if you want me to. Yeah, I mean, Marie, again, it's difficult to read them. But let me ask you this question, a little more pointed. Um, the judge ultimately told them that it's just about that one statement, that one headline. Of course, there's two others that they are considering. But for this one, it was just about the headline, not the whole article. Um, who do you think that benefits the most? Let's say she said, well, you're supposed to consider the whole article. Who would that have benefited more? I think it would have benefited Johnny Depp either way you look at it. She said, I spoke up about sexual violence and men in power, and I am a victim of sexual violence. They heard a lot of very heinous allegations from Amber Heard. And if those allegations are true, then it's very problematic for Mr. Depp. I think they're taking their jobs very seriously because they're asking questions. And I think asking questions is not a good thing for Amber Heard because she said a lot of things that were not in sync with what actually happened, what evidence she presented in terms of photographs and her injuries, and they're paying attention to that closely. Fair enough. And, and Lawrence, you know, I've had a lot of opportunity to speak with Marie, so I know where she stands on this case. But this is the first time I have an opportunity to be with you during this trial. Love to get your thoughts on the trial itself and, and where this case stands for you. Well, Mike, uh, you know, as a busy lawyer, I can't watch every day. So beginning my updates, the daily sheets, my 13 year old daughter, Charlie. So she's been filling me in. She's, she thinks Johnny Depp is on the right side here. And I've been going back and watching a lot of the test, but I agree. There's a lot of things that um, she has not, that Amber Heard has not proven that are true. And things are looking, in my opinion, good for uh, Johnny Depp, certainly. All right, Marie, are you still kind of in that same camp that she hasn't done enough? I thought it was a fairly cogent argument made uh, by her, her lawyers asking this jury not to require domestic violence victims to be perfect. The fact that if the pictures uh, didn't match up or if they didn't have pictures, that those aren't things that should be held against domestic violence victims. Did that change your mind at all? All right, let me just say this, Mr. Ayala. <laughs> I don't have a side, okay? I'm on the side of justice. 
And I don't believe that asking a domestic violence victim to prove her allegations is in any way victim shaming. I don't have a side. I just want it to make sense to me. I hold Johnny Depp to the same level of scrutiny that I hold Amber. I still question him for not bringing in the doctor who allegedly told him that I know you're lying to me about the finger chop being in the door, the accordion door, but it looks like a high velocity injury to me. He should have brought that person in. So I hold him accountable as well. I don't think it's victim shaming for a man or a woman who's a victim of domestic violence for a person, especially a juror and an attorney who happens to be a nurse and a DB counselor to want it to make sense. I'm not picking a side, I don't have a camp, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, and again, and I'm sorry for the terminology I used. <laughs> I just know from okay. all of our conversations, we've talked many times that you have felt that Amber Heard has not um, met her burden as far as showing that she has been a victim of domestic violence in a number of instances. So I know that, and that's all I meant. Not that you had chosen sides. No, in I'm, your estimation of the evidence, that's kind of where you've fallen. That's fair, correct? Yes, that's fair. Thank right. you. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, stand by. It's time for a quick break. Let me get out of here before I get in any more trouble. Uh, Johnny Depp claims that he filed the defamation lawsuit against his ex-wife because her op-ed ruined his career. But what role did cancel culture play in his downfall? When we return, we're going to take a closer look at the issue and compare this case to other cases influenced by the pressure of cancel culture. And then later in our Talk Back segment, that jury of five men and two women are now deciding the civil suit between Depp and Heard. So what do you think's going on behind closed doors? Hit us up on our social media pages, and we'll share some of your comments later on in the show. And don't forget to join me tonight as I bring...